And then finally on to Lea Vassi, who will also be teaching uh, work the geo, um, the data geo workshop this week. So we're pleased to have you here all from Boulder, Colorado. Yes. Where you work with the NEON Open Data and Supporting Data Skills. So, welcome. Um, thank you. <laughs> I'm, thanks. So excited to be here today, and I just wanted to start with a, a short story of being a graduate student and working in ecology and ending up working with LiDAR remote sensing data. And I was so excited to get started, and then I got my first data set that was over 30 gigs, and I knew Excel, <laughs> and I knew ArcGIS, and I tried to bring that data into ArcGIS and start to manually process it and realize that it was going to take me years <laughs> with that approach. And so quickly, I learned I needed an alternate route, and then a friend introduced me to MATLAB, and I started to learn how to program and automated skills, and that's kind of the path. And then I went to a new job um, at NEON, where I am now, and I had to switch to R, and then I have to use Python, because everyone uses different languages and different tools, so you kind of have to adapt as you're working with different people. And so I felt the pain <laughs> that Tracy was talking about associated with working with data, but I've also felt the pleasure and the happiness associated with being able to process your data and getting your results and being able to actually do research. So this whole process um, is really important, and this need for data skills is real, and we're all feeling it, and we're all on the same page. And so I think I'm speaking to, um, I think we all kind of are in that same uh, space. And so... I wanted to just quickly tell you a little bit about NEON, where I work, and then I'll tell you about how we're kind of a part of this whole data training initiative. So NEON is the National Ecological Observatory Network. Um, our headquarters is in Boulder, Colorado, and we are collecting and providing data for 30 years to support the study of ecological change, both the causes of that change and the drivers of that change. So we're talking petabytes of data coming out of our observatory, and it's all free, and it's all open. Um, and a little bit about our design, just if you haven't heard of us before. Uh, we have sites across the United States, so we have lots of sites. And each one of them is very different to represent ecological heterogeneity across the whole United States, so that you can begin to look at change over time across the entire country. And then at each site, we have a suite of measurement systems. So we have things like flux towers at all of our sites, collecting temperature and precipitation and wind speed, and we have instruments in our streams and lakes collecting aquatic information. We have field techs out sampling trees and getting information about small mammals and insects. So we have a whole suite of data, including uh, also a remote sensing platform, our airborne observation platform, that is going to be flying these sites every year. And all of these pieces together allow scientists, so you, anyone that's interested in doing research, um, in the continental United States to really characterize ecosystem structure and function over time, so that 30-year time period. And then to scale from the site level up to a regional level using the remote sensing data. And then at the entire country scale, we have global data sets like Landsat and MODIS, satellite-based data that are available to support that scaling process. And then all of our data are online. Um, we're just building the observatory now, so they're starting to come online. You can go to neonscience.org and check out our data, download the data, request the remote sensing data. Everything's free, everything's open. All the documentation associated with how we set up our sensors, how we process our data, everything is open. It's a community resource. So with that, we've got all of these data, but the question is, how do we use all of these data? Because actually, it's quite complicated. It's in lots of different formats and lots of different um, data types. And so this need for, for data-intensive training is very relevant to NEON because we need to support the community in using our data. And by the way, if you're not using NEON data, you're using some other data, a lot of the skills are the same. Understanding file formats, understanding dealing with spatial data and different projections and coordinate reference systems. So those skills, we want to contribute to this community who is supporting the science, supporting actually doing the science. 
And of course, getting back to where I started as a graduate student, it's not going to happen in Excel. Excel is great for some things, but not for big data analysis. We're not going to do analysis there. So these automated skills, R, Python, whatever the tool is, we need to develop um, resources to help each other work with these data. And so at NEON, um, we have a whole education component. In fact, it's a major component of this project. And um, some of our educational components related to data skills range from um, workshops. That's why I'm here this week. I'm so excited to be here to help teach some of these data skills and the spatio-temporal um, focused lessons. We do science videos to teach key science concepts. We have teaching data subsets. So one of the big challenges if you're trying to teach this stuff is where do you start? And if you go and download a huge data set to actually be able to teach how to work with that data set, you have to do a bunch of work as a teacher, as an instructor, to put the data set together in a way that it's small enough that a student can learn something so they don't get stuck downloading these huge data sets. So we put together teaching subsets as well to support that learning component. So neondataskills.org, um, for anyone that's actually coming to the workshop this week, that's where all of our online tutorials are right now. And we're collab we have collaborated with Data Carpentry on developing a lot of those materials. So this is the site. And you can go here, and we have tutorials on lots of different topics associated with spatiotemporal data. So things like, how do you work with LiDAR data? Or how do you work with HDF5, hierarchical data format? Um, how do you bring that into a tool like R? What is the structure of the file format? If you understand the structure, actually you can carry that information to a lot of different tools if you need to work with it. So we try to provide some of those foundational skills to work with those data. And everything here is free and open. It's all on GitHub. You could go and fork the lessons and adapt them to a teaching environment that you um, were working in. So this week, we're teaching our spatiotemporal uh, data lessons that we developed collaboratively with Data Carpentry. And so the way we started this was we picked a science theme. Now, this one happens to be phenology. Just because you don't necessarily work in that area doesn't mean that the skills aren't relevant to you. But we picked an actual science theme and said, what data would you need to get to something like this where you're trying to plot a trend of greenness over time for a large area? And so. Here's that kind of initial concept. And then thinking about all of the skills needed. So you're going to need to understand something about spatial raster data, no matter what format it's in. You're going to need to know something about metadata, because you're probably going to download the data from somewhere. You're going to need to know something about what kinds of packages or libraries, depending on what tool you're working in. Um, and then there's going to be a whole process associ associated with importing the data, cleaning it up, and visualizing it. So that's kind of a workflow. And then the workshop addresses those things and then gets to endpoints, like here's how you visualize a whole set of Landsat rasters in R. Or here's how you deal with coordinate reference systems, because they'll really mess you up. <laughs> if you have data in different projections and you try to work with them together, it's going to be a problem. So understanding how this works, you can kind of address that problem before you um, encounter it. And then again, the teaching subsets. So we've put together some data sets that are clipped to smaller spatial extents, smaller data sets that will be easier to use in teaching because if you're trying to process huge data sets in a workshop, it's just going to be uh, very challenging. So these are available. They're all on Figshare. So when we do all this work and put these data sets together, anyone could go to Figshare if they wanted and use them for teaching. Again, following the data and software carpentry model, this is all collaborative. Everything's on GitHub. Anyone can use any of our materials. And you can also contribute to it. So you can comment on, this didn't quite work for me, or give us suggestions as to other types of lessons that we could build that might be helpful. And then a few other pieces of our program. Um, we do workshops, like this one today. We go to a lot of scientific meetings and have workshops there where there's a big audience that is already taking resources to attend the workshop. We'll organize, or to attend the conference, and then we'll organize a workshop around that. And we've just gotten great feedback on our workshops, which is really exciting. So lots of good feedback from the community 
Um, and they typically fill up, and we typically have waiting lists. So just, that just speaks to the demand uh, for data skills. Um, we have science videos, if anyone's interested in checking that out. When you go to Neon Data Skills, you can go to the science video um, section, and we have things on how, what is LIDAR, and just kind of five-minute, quick, animated videos that teach data concepts. And then we have other programs, like an internship program, and um, we're doing a remote sensing and science summer institute this summer. So with that, here's the URL, and you can um, tweet. I'm, oh, my Twitter's not on here, but there's my email, and my Twitter is Leah A. Wasser. And thank you very much for having me.